I'm very happy to have with us today a retired senior IAS officer experienced in many different types of work as an IAS officer. Right now we have with us Mr. J.K. Dadu. Let's listen to him. Over to you, Mr. Dadu. Thank you very much, Mr. Mathur. I've been following you for some time on the LinkedIn and uh, based on your initial uh, message of uh, doing this uh, in October 2023, I thought, let me just settle down in LinkedIn and now it's almost this Sunday I complete one full year. And therefore I thought, let me, let me try out what uh, new experiment you are uh, create, you have created here. So I'll speak about the foreign trade of India. Uh, and the three, three reasons why I chose this are number one, foreign trade means exports and imports of goods and services in and out of the country. And therefore it covers all sectors of the economy. When you include services, it also covers all the social sectors. And when you talk of goods, it covers the remaining sectors. So that's one thing. It's a complete sectoral uh, presentation of everything that's happening within the country. Number two, it involves a large number, lakhs of importers and exporters spread throughout the country. Therefore, they would find it useful because I've used the latest data from the Commerce Ministry where I worked for seven years. So the data of 23-24 released on 15th of April 24 has been used to uh, indicate all the milestones in exports and imports of goods and services. The third reason why I chose this topic is that my own familiarity with the subject, because I was Joint Secretary and Additional Secretary in the Ministry of Commerce for seven years altogether. Number two, I was on the board of seven public sector undertakings of Commerce Ministry. I was also on the board of the Federation of Indian Export Organization, FIO it is called, which is the overarching body which deals with imports and exports of India. I was also as joint secretary in charge of four export promotion councils and as additional secretary sanctioned grants to more than 40 export promotion councils. So I'm very familiar with this subject and I thought I should, uh, uh, should uh, delve into this because this would be interesting for a large number of people uh, this article which I put out on LinkedIn has already seen 700 reads and therefore that was another reason. Lastly, I have experience, it's not academic at all, I have experience of being India's lead negotiator for free trade agreements between India and Australia and India and New Zealand for three years. So I have hands-on experience plus I have uh, all kinds of research experience and other experience on this subject. Now, when we look at this subject, we find that the Indian government today shows export and import figures uh, every month and then year end. So I'm taking the year end figures because every month it fluctuates and therefore it doesn't uh, give you a consistent analysis. The economy has a total export of goods and services of 766 billion in 23-24, that is April 23 to March 24. The target which the government has set for 2030 is $1 trillion for export of goods and $1 trillion for exports of services. That means the total target is $2 trillion and we are at 766 billion if we take goods and services together. So what we need to do in the next six years is literally about tripling the, tripling the performance as on today. Now, if we look at the exports alone between 22-23 and 23-24, a comparison of last year and the year before that, we find that our merchandise exports have actually dropped from 451 billion to 437 billion. Mm -hmm. While our exports have, uh, while our services exports have expanded from 325 billion to 339 billion. 
So you can call it a coincidence, but our services exports have gone up by 24 billion and the goods exports have declined by 24 billion. Sure. So the net figure remains 76 billion between 22, 23 and 23, 24. Therefore, if you have no growth in one year and you're planning to triple the growth in six years is the entire focus of my article and my speech today. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay. Now I look at four important trading partners first. Then I look, look at 13 export items, which are of high magnitude. I will look at 11 import items, which are of high magnitude. And then I will give a seven prompt strategy, how I feel these exports can be enhanced to reach our target of 2 trillion that I spoke about. So looking at the first country with which we have significant trade is uh, the United Arab Emirates, UAE. Uh, you'll be surprised to know that five years ago, we had a true $200 million surplus with this country. And after we signed the free trade agreement, which was signed only last year, today, as on today, as, as on 15th April 2024, to be precise, we have a total import of $48 billion and exports of $34 billion. That means in five years from a $200 million surplus, we are into $14 billion of deficit in terms of trade. While people may say that, you know, we want imports from UAE and therefore what is wrong with this? The point I'm trying to make here is that when you sign a free trade agreement, there should be a semblance of balance in terms of the foreign, foreign exchange that is used uh, in, between the inflow and the outgo of foreign exchange. Here, looking purely at the figures, I'm not convinced whether this FTA has really benefited us so far. But I am open to question and I'm open to correction. Uh, but I have written my article also that Commerce Ministry needs to have a six monthly relook at whether the objectives which are set for this FTA have been achieved. The second country is Russia. Now, Russia has a very interesting uh, uh, data uh, statistics, which I'll uh, indicate now. Our imports have grown, grown in the last five years by 10 times, from $6 billion to $61 billion. But the reason why I'm not worried here is because we have got after the sanctions imposed on Russia, Russian oil at 30 to 40% discount. And therefore, we have saved enormous amount of money. I don't want to quote figures which the Honorable Minister of Petroleum quotes, but we have saved 30 to 40% by way of the discounted price over the international price. But our exports, unfortunately, have remained stagnant at $4 billion. So the deficit, real deficit has grown to nearly $57 billion. 61 minus 4 is $57 billion. My only point with respect to Russia is that we should bridge this trade gap because they are flushed with rupees. We have a rupee ruble trading account with Russia. So because of the $61 billion exports they have done, they are flushed with rupees. And they are looking for investment opportunities and import opportunities from India. So if we do a focused item-wise growth strategy, there's huge potential of tapping Russia, which today I've lived in Russia for three and a half years, is like any European country with all international brands available in every mall, in every store in the country, especially in the two main cities of Moscow and St. Petersburg. I move on to the third country, which, is, which has the most alarming situation with us, and that is China. Now, our trade deficit with China has been rising steadily. And while our exports have been stagnant at about $17 billion, our imports have risen steadily from $70 billion a few years ago to $102 billion in 22-23. 102 billion, which is giving a trade deficit of 85 billion as on today. 
When I was there in the Commerce Ministry, the trade deficit was in the range of about 50 to 60 billion, six years ago. It is now 85 billion, and this is the largest trade deficit we have with any other country. Now, the strange thing is we have put restrictions on trading with China in every, through every instrument possible. And many of these instruments have been putting quota restrictions, putting uh, anti-dumping duties on them because you know our domestic industry has been very badly hit by their very cheap imports, uh, by, by their very cheap exports and import into the country. In fact, the, some, of, some of the import, exporters tell me, some of the domestic industry tells me that they, they, ex, they exported less than marginal cost. Yeah. How they do that, you know, you know better and I know better, but I don't want to discuss that here. Right. The point I'm trying to make is Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Commerce need to use a huge leverage of imports yeah. by, by having a growth strategy of vigorous exports to China. And they need a large number of items which we can provide. My last country is USA, fortunately, where we have a good trade surplus. All these three countries, we had a trade deficit. USA, the report says, latest reports indicate that we have touched $78 billion worth of exports while our imports are at about 41 billion. So we have a trade surplus of 37 billion. But unfortunately, this is not a very good uh, way of looking at things because Seven years ago, when I was in the Ministry of Commerce, I remember the two countries have set a target of 500 billion trade between, between us in five years. Now, we have reached only 119 billion so far. So my, my feeling is that the Commerce Department, the State Department of USA are not in sync. Until they are not in sync, this large target that the two countries have set between themselves and about which I have written my book, 100 Ideas to Improve Governance in India. It needs to be, you know, these two departments need to synergize their strategy so that this, uh, the two uh, top leaders of the countries which had set this target is achievable. Okay. Now I'll move on to 13. Uh, but, sir, before you move, let me ask, is this surplus with the US mainly in services? No, I'm talking only of goods. I haven't touched services. Yet. Okay, you haven't touched services. Okay. I haven't touched services. The reason is the services data for 23-24 will has a three-month lag and only the Reserve Bank of India has the uh, latest figures. We will get these figures only at the end of June. I can talk about services in more detail. Okay. Uh, just a minor question. Let's continue. Okay. okay. So out of the 13 main items of import and export, I will deal with six which have shown a decline and seven items which have shown a rise. And then you'll get an idea of the export basket mix of ours, how it is performing. I'll first take rice, which has shown a minor decline of from $11.1 billion to about $10.4 billion. Now we need a marketing strategy here because uh, exports of basmati rice are expanding every year. More and more countries want this. And therefore, if you are able to devise a proper strategy and don't create any bottlenecks in this and don't create any export control uh, temporary measures, there is a huge, huge possibility and potential of exports. Sir. The second product is marine, marine goods, where we have the uh, exports have slid from 8 billion to 7.3 billion. Now we have a 7,000 kilometer coastline and MPDA, the Marine Products Export Development Authority of India, again needs to devise a comprehensive strategy because there are a large number of marine goods which only India produces in bulk and there's huge demand in Far East Asia, et cetera, for these goods. The third item which has shown a decline surprisingly is leather and leather goods, which are doing quite all right but have fallen from 4.7 billion last year to 4.2 billion, a decline of nearly half a billion. Here again, it's worrisome because six years ago, a target was set for leather and leather goods of $6 billion to be achieved in five years. We have crossed those five years, but we are not even half the mark there from 3 billion 
It was supposed to be 6 billion. We've reached about 4.2 billion. From 4.7, we slid to 4.2 billion. So here again, the Council for Leather Exports, which is the main agency for doing this, needs to revitalize its ideas and expand uh, both geographically and in terms of the deepening of the market. Gems and jewelry, again, is a very major item of pride for Indian exports. But here again, last year, we, we've slid from 37.9 billion to 32.7 billion, a huge drop of $5.5 billion. Now, sanctions on Russian diamonds are slated to be the singular reason. I don't agree with this. And I feel that the Gems and Jewelry Export Promotion Council, again, needs to professionalize, do a strategic push to more countries and more items and uh, get our appropriate share of the global market. Ready-made garments is the fifth item where, again, we have slid from 16.1 billion to 14.5 billion. Although this is something which we, uh, you, we take pride that you know, we are able to export all kinds of garments, etc. Uh, the problem here again is that the ministry has set up a target of 100 billion. And if we look at all items of export, including ready-made garments, etc., we are only at 30.9 billion and we need to reach 100 billion. Again, almost a tripling of our exports. Yeah. So textile ministry, the 10 export promotional councils under the textile ministry need to, again, revitalize, need to reinvent themselves and create an appropriate strategy. The sixth item where we have shown a decline, and this is the last one on decline, is petroleum goods, petroleum products, where unfortunately we were about to touch about 100 billion, 97.4 was the figure in 22, 23 but we have got, got down to 84.1 billion. Now, this is inexplicable because our refineries were doing an excellent job of getting crude, refining it and exporting it in large quantities. I don't know what really has happened, and I, uh, I would urge the Petroleum Ministry as well as the concerned big oil exporters to, to look at this carefully because this is something which has hit us really badly. Now, coming to the seven items where we have done well, and we need to do uh, even better because, you know, our targets, as I said, are, you know, they have to go from nearly 450 odd billion to 1 trillion. The first item here is the electronic goods where we performed really well from 23.5 billion in 22-23 to 29.1 billion. In one year, we have risen by about nearly 6, 6.5 billion. And the main reason for this is the cell phone exports, which Apple and other local producers now have started exporting in a very big way. Apple itself did about 5 billion, more than 5 billion. And the latest figures show that it may probably double very soon. Spices is another good, is another item where more than 10% increase has been achieved. Although the figures are low, 3.7 billion to 4.2 billion. But here we've had some chemical related issues recently. And Spices Board has to put its house in order because some countries have said we won't buy a particular kind of spice from India. But this has huge demand. We have a huge Indian diaspora outside who want these goods and therefore we again need to strategize professionally. I don't know, for unfortunately or unfortunately, has doubled from 1.7 billion to 3.9 billion. But I know is something that we need domestically. There are domestic compulsions. And therefore, I'm not on uh, this trip that we should try and expand our INO exports. We need them uh, in large measure in our domestic industry. Drugs and pharmaceuticals is growing at an excellent pace. 10% increase last year, 25.3 billion to 27.8 billion. Here we have the highest potential, Ms. Madhura, Dr. Madhura, I'd like to mention, because we have in India the largest number of FD approved factories. Yes, we do. Unfor unfortunately, rigorous quality standards have not been maintained by some of these factories, which is why uh, USA is realigning with China to get some of these uh, drugs and pharmaceuticals. And therefore, there's a cause of concern to our Pharmaceutical Export Promotion Council to see where the problem lies and correct it as soon as possible. The next good item, a large item, is engineering goods. 
where we have reached the only item where we have reached 100 billion plus from 107 billion last year we reached 109.3 billion this year uh, the engineering export promotion council is one of the best that we have and if they work professionally and exploit more opportunities there's again huge potential here because india is, is considered as leader of the south today and many countries in the south want to buy engineering goods from us Oil seeds is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a strange item which has shown a marginal increase in exports from 1.3 billion to 1.4 billion. But the, the irony is that we import vegetable oil to the tune of 15 to 20 billion dollars. So I don't know why we've decided to export oil seed because you know the domestic compulsions are very, very strong here. Yes. You're actually importing such a large quantity. There's no question why we should ex export this. Lastly, I come to fruits and vegetables, for which the Agricultural Product Development Authority, Export Development Authority, has been pushing this for a long time. And we have shown a minor 10% increase from 3.2 billion to 3.6 billion. But here again, we need to ensure that our packing and pesticide related quality measures are intact so that they, we are able to cater to the large Indian diaspora again uh, for this. So if you look at the consolidated export figures of goods only, we have actually dropped from 451 billion, which is why I said 451 to 1 trillion we had to go. We have dropped to 437 billion, a 14 billion decline. And from 437 billion now, we need to reach 1 trillion, which is approximately a two and a half times increase in six years. Moving on to the import item list of seven, where... Uh, 11, where seven items we have shown a decline and four items we've shown an increase. I'll take the decline items first because they are heartening. Number one, on coal co coal and coke, we used to import 49.7 billion in 2022-23. It's gone down to 38.8 billion, which means that Coal India is doing a good job of providing good support for import substitution. They're, they're expanding their facilities. We now have a professional as the CEO of Coal India. And I'm very happy that this uh, uh, 11 billion decline has happened in one year itself. Second good thing is about fertilizer drop from 10.4 billion to uh, from 17.2 billion to 10.4 billion. Again, a huge drop. This also shows that boosting domestic production has helped us to eliminate imports to some extent. And if we are able, to, this is not rocket science, if our fertilizer domestic production companies can put their act together, we could be in a position to eliminate imports completely over the next five to 10 years. The third item is vegetable oil. As I mentioned, we imported 20.8 billion, 22-23. It has gone down to 14.8 billion. So it is a drop, substantial drop. But the point is that uh, we need to be self-sustainable here. And to be self-sustainable, we need to have an but organized... I need to take a pause here, okay? Okay. So, okay. Back. so we are back. And okay. uh, Mr. Dadu, please continue. Okay. So I'll move on to the fourth item, which is petroleum and crude. Uh, there's, again, the drop here is very heartening from $209 billion to $179 billion. I'm not sure whether we can actually calibrate it downwards uh, unless domestic oil discovery takes place. And I believe that uh, the Indian oil, uh, the, the Indian oil explorers are doing a good job of it. Uh, new places are being uh, located where oil is being found. So if that happens, this can be calibrated downward, but I'm not very sure about this. Organic and inorganic chemicals have also shown a decline from 33.4 billion to 26.7 billion. And this is laudable and this should be monitored and strategized so that we can reduce it further. Pearls, precious, precious and semi-precious stones have also shown a downward trend. This is again heartening from $30.7 billion to $23.8 billion in just one year. This is a little difficult to understand because many of these uh, pearls, precious and semi-precious stones, we don't, we don't have in India. Uh, so if we have found something or how this has happened is a little mystery to me, but value added finished goods 
uh, exporters uh, are always looking for the raw material and as long as they have uh, adequate supply this will thrive uh, lastly transport equipment has fallen from 31.3 billion dollars to 26.9 billion or more than a 15% increase which is plausible because the auto sector in india is doing extremely well you find one new auto manufacturer coming in every year this year tesla is very strongly looking at ev production in india so that is something now i'll move on to four items where we have had uh, a massive import uh, enhancement in import one is gold and this worries us a lot because this is conspicuous consumption from 35 billion dollars in 22 23 we've reached 45.5 billion dollars a 30% increase which is unforgivable because you know this is consuming more than Uh, this is about 800 tons of gold that we import uh, and we need to uh, we need to conserve this i have again a strategy for this in my book 100 ideas to improve governance in india i'm trying to follow that up but this is something which need needs uh, a, a very strong curb on our side electronic goods is very heartening uh, it's import i mean it's not heartening is import, uh, imports have actually risen from 77.2 billion to 89.6 billion but this is mainly coming from china which is the cause for worry and uh, while we are producing and exporting a lot of electronic items we still are enhancing the imports also very substantially so this is something which both commerce ministry and the ministry of electronics and it need to carefully look at and see whether we are importing only the important items or are we uh you know opening the stables for um, everyone to come in electrical and non electrical machinery has shown a slight slight incline from 45.4 billion dollars to 48.8 billion dollars and the engineering export promotion council needs to look at this because uh, uh import substitution is possible here and uh, there's no reason why this should increase lastly i look at pulses which have risen from 1.9 billion to 3.9 billion now I, i very strongly feel about pulses because agricultural ministry needs to put its act together this is no rocket science we produce almost all agricultural goods and uh, goods in the country today and there's no reason why on a mission mode we can't produce enough pulses so that we are self sufficient especially in the atmanirbhar bharat and amrit kal slogan that is uh, going on in the country today So, if you look at the total overall picture of imports, our bill has risen, has dropped from seven seven hundred fifteen point nine billion to six seventy seven point two billion. As I mentioned, uh, it has allowed us the since the drop in imports is larger than the uh, the drop in exports, our total trade deficit has actually gone down from two sixty four billion last year. to 240 240 billion this year so it's an appreciable decline in the trade deficit whereas the actual increase in exports in and the actual increase in imports sorry the actual decrease in exports is 24 billion import decrease is also 24 billion so actually you have a total figure of goods goods and services exports of 766 billion okay let me just repeat that i think i made a, a slight uh, uh, error the actual decline in our services exports and the actual decline in our goods exports is matching completely so that the total exports of goods and services remains the same yeah okay 76 7766 billion yeah okay now i move on to how we can get into a situation where we can expand our exports my first suggestion is never in the ministry of commerce have we done a professional demand estimation study of the entire export basket of goods and services now till we do that we are not actually data based realistic uh, uh, estimates of what we can do because we don't have a demand estimation study so therefore my second point is either we should do it professionally 
or we have a mechanism in the commerce ministry that one joint secretary, there are 10 joint secretaries, the entire globe is divided between the 10 joint secretaries geographically and also goods wise. So each one looks after a geographical territory and a certain number of goods. Now, if they in their own territories create a demand estimation study of the goods that are assigned to them, then they'll be able to make a distinction between what is possible and expandable and what is not possible and expandable. So this is a very important suggestion I made in uh, uh, my article and I'm voicing it here. The third important thing is that our largest export body is the Federation of Indian Export Organization, FIEO. It has all the major exporting item exporters in as members. Mm -hmm. And this is the largest membership. Now, what they do is they do a lot of awareness building. They do, do a lot of documentation training, etc. But again, they have not created an India-wise export strategy to be calibrated annually with respect to the geopolitical situation. As a result, their, their capacity is underutilized. And therefore, I strongly feel that they need to act with a lot of confidence, authority, and professionalism if we need to reach this huge target that has been set for us. The next item is about the 40 export promotion councils. It's a very good thing that this structure was created in the Ministry of Commerce, where certain goods were given to a certain number of exporters and a council was created, so that specific focus could be laid on that particular item. There are 40 such councils. But again, the problem is that the office bearers of these councils are generally the exporters, with a few government officials also thrown in. We need to select the apex council members very carefully, because unless they are professional, unless they are big in their own right, they'll not be able to lead the entire sector towards greater growth. Okay. The next point is about a board of trade which the Commerce Minister chairs, where all stakeholders are present. Anybody who has anything to do with the export is present there, board of trade. Now, my suggestion is that sometimes it meets only once in a year, then it becomes a you know routine meeting. This board of trade must meet every quarter mm -hmm. as a brainstorming session. New ideas should be created because new exporters are coming in. And then the Commerce Secretary should be tasked with taking the plausible items where we can expand and creating an action plan down the line. He has a huge battery of people. I, I think Commerce Secretary deals with 150 ambassadors of foreign countries sitting in India, Delhi, 150 Indian ambassadors abroad, Yeah, large number of, he has a huge paraphernalia to deal with. And if he takes the plausible items and makes out an action plan, wonders are possible. My last point is about uh, the uh, Commerce Ministry giving about 200 crores to all the export motion councils and trade related bodies like CII, FICI, ASOCHAM, etc., to hold exhibitions abroad and in India to get the buyers and sellers together, buyer seller meets as they are called. But here again, you know what I find as as uh, as I've been there for a very long time, we don't do a cost benefit study of every grant that we give. So unless you do a cost benefit study, you don't get to find that a particular council has worked professionally, got so many new importers in the list, got so many new importers to meet with our exporters. Unless new importers and exporters are added to the list, we will not be able to achieve this stiff target. My last point is about our ambassadors abroad. Now, we have not fully utilized them as a strategy. The uh, ambassadors abroad, since I've worked in the Indian Embassy in Moscow, I'm familiar. Each ambassador has to send a monthly report to the, uh, to the foreign secretary and the foreign minister. Every, every month it has to be done. Now, he puts out all salient points of what has happened in the month in that country. But... There is very little focus. There was very little focus on commerce. I'm sure it has increased very substantially. But then what I'm suggesting here is that the, 
the external affairs minister must issue a directive to the ambassadors that every month when you send this report, I want a certain section to be dealt with only with Commerce Secretary and therefore send a copy to the Commerce Secretary also. And there he details the new importers, the importers who are looking for avenues of import or investment with India. So that, you know, formal orders, once they are issued, this will become a very important database on which our exporters can work. So this is all that I wanted to say about exports of goods and imports of goods and services. As regards service, uh, exports of import of goods and export of goods. As regards services, as I mentioned, there's a three month lag. So I won't be able to get into specific services, but generally speaking, our services have reached $339 billion in March, 2024. The target is one trillion. So while in exports, we have to grow two and a half times to reach one trillion. In services, we have to go three times to reach uh, one trillion. And therefore, again, if you look at the total mass of goods, of uh, export of goods and services, it is 766 billion to touch two trillion. In goods from 437 million, billion to one trillion. In services from, uh, in services from 339 billion to one trillion. So it's a huge task to be done in the next six years, requires complete professionalism, new ideas, disruptive ideas. And that's why, that's why I thought I will voice this uh, through your channel and through your, uh, uh, through your system so that more and, more and more people get to know about this. These actual figures from the Commerce Ministry don't get, uh, people can't access easily. Uh, so therefore, I thought I'll formalize it and uh, present it. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I'm uh, it's a very interesting and very detailed analysis that you have done. I'm so glad that you have presented it. Um, what I hear in very brief terms is that there's a lot of work to be done. Yes. There's yes. a lot of work by various agencies. Some are in government. Some are associations of private sector. Uh, these are the two main players, the associations of the private sector and the ministries and agencies, embassies. There's a lot of work to be done. Without it, the targets may or may not be reached. Okay, So that's one thing that I hear. A second thing I hear is that uh, there's a lack of comprehensive overall strategy. Things are happening piecemeal here, piecemeal there. This is there, that is there. But the target is not backed up by a detailed or even say a broad uh, layout that look out of this 1 billion, yeah. X will be so much, Y will be so much and so on. So there's a lot of, and the third thing I hear is that in the past, we haven't met our targets. Doesn't yes. mean we won't meet them in the future, but yes. the past, the target meeting is in this sector, especially when you're talking about foreign trade and showing us the declines and the increases, then uh, it's not a very optimistic story. There are certain parts of it that are uh, worth uh, emulating. Uh, but some of them are sort of lucky. Uh, and then there are parts which are unfortunate, like the gold import. Now you can say people are getting richer, so they need more gold. Well, okay, fine. But that's a drain on such a large drain on your foreign exchange, which you are having a hard time uh, anyway. So why are we... In... Anyway, uh, this is what I hear. The targets are tough to meet. They have not been easy to meet in the last few years. Now you can say, well, there's COVID, there's war, there's this and that. But we are not going to have a peaceful world or a shock-free world in the next ever. Okay, there's always going to be shocks. There's always going to be problems, as you know. And um, you can't expect some smooth sailing anyway. This is a turbulent ocean. Exports and imports are turbulent anyway. There are shocks all the time. That's what I'm hearing from you. And what you're saying is that, look, you have presented data in a very coherent way that nobody else 
has access to and you're very carefully laid it out. So I think uh, that's what I hear. And, and thank you very much for it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just want to mention that, uh, you know, unfortunately, while digital India has pierced through several sectors of the economy, uh, data crunching in the foreign trade sector, unfortunately, has not risen to the same level. And if that happens, that would be a great thing for India because goods and services export. Today, India as a leader of the South is looked up by more than 100 countries, LDCs and developing countries. Especially after G20, it is really risen in stature. Now, we have to exploit that stature in terms of how we can supply goods and services to these nations. And if we have, a, as, I, as, I, as you rightly said, if we have a broad, comprehensive, well thought out strategy with proper data crunching, this is possible. If it is not done, then such a stiff target should not be set. Because you know, you set a target, then you don't achieve it, then there, there's a lot of demoralization and uh, it causes its own set of problems. Okay, I think we can end it here. It's been pretty long and pretty comprehensive. Yeah. I think we can end it here. And I'll be happy to be back with another young person or an expert soon. But for the moment, <laughs> let's say bye to the viewers and we'll talk a little bit after that on our own. Okay. So let's end the recording here. Bye, everybody.